This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about divorce, Italian huh? style, from oh, 1961, shit. directed by Pietro Germi. Who? He ordered marriage on the rocks with a twist. Italian style goes the tagline. <laughs> can that be our tagline too? Um, uh, did you? No, I said, can it be I mean, our tag? I mean, it could be our tagline, but do you do that? Do you Italian order, style? Did, did you order podcasts on the rocks with a twist? Italian style? <laughs> Italian style. I've ordered things Italian style before. Uh, usually they just call the cops when I say that. <laughs> yeah. Say, can I get that Italian style? And they say, yeah, no problem. And then the SWAT team, team comes in. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They tell you I'm a cop undercover. They you're, say, going away, you're, you're going away, pervert. You're going away, perv, for real this time. And I say, I'm what? I said, uh, I, I said a nothing, Pison. Big Pison. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, um, uh-huh. the, the synopsis from Letterboxd, RJ. Sure, sure, why not? Fernando Kefalu? Uh, Sound good to you? Fefe? Fefe. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Fefe. Just call him uh, Fefe. Is desperate to marry his cousin Angela, <laughs> but he is married to Rosalia, and divorce is illegal in Italy. To get around the law, he tries to trick his wife into having an affair so he can catch her and murder her, as he knows he would be given a light sentence for killing an adulterous woman. He How does per- he know that? He doesn't know. He knows a guy. He just knows. He, he heard. Okay. He persuades a painter to lure his wife into an affair, but Rosalia proves to be more faithful than he expected. Um, so number one, that's wrong. Yeah. Uh, for in a couple spots, but the one thing that I found wrong, because I didn't, I didn't dig into any supplements or anything like that, but I did read the the stuff on criterion channel and they keep calling her uh his cousin she's not she is his niece but in the subtitles do they not call her his first cousin they they say that but then he he won at at a certain point he describes his relationship to her to like one of the nuns at the school or something and he's just like oh i'm he's like oh uh, that that's bullshitting though I oh, think. that was just the bullshitting part? I th- yeah, because he was trying to be like, oh, that's I'm her uncle who's coming to give her a... But that's not better, though. Why Why wouldn't he just say I, well, he, I was he's her just, cousin? I don't know. He's Because maybe it makes more sense to, for him to be the uncle because it looks right rather than a cousin because a cousin's hard to explain. It's like, that's a big year gap for maybe this era. Okay. And so maybe being an uncle, it's like, oh, that's why I'm coming over to hug and kiss her because I'm her uncle. Because if you're... I mean, yeah, I mean, ultimately, neither of them are good. So I think he's because like, because earlier on he does say it's like it, when they're in the church in that first scene of the church, she, she's cousin. my first cousin, and then later oh, okay. when because the, the nun's going to stand like because he like goes to see his uh, cousin and he's like, oh no, I'm her uncle or or bad trans or bad bad uh, translations. I don't know. I, I don't okay. think Criterion would be that sloppy, but that's how I interpreted that. Okay, which I I thought could have been the case, but I was like, something's not lining up here. But uh, the other part of that uh, thing that is not quite right, like she's not uh, too faithful either, she, she, his wife. She eventually takes right off. Spoilers. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, hey, did Dan Klaus do the cover for this? That is, is this? actually my very first note, RJ. No, that, but, but that is Jaime Hernandez of Love and Rockets fame. Oh, so there's a, okay, then, so that's kind of close. And there's another uh, Pietro Janermy movie that we'll be watching in Criterion one day, and that cover is drawn by uh, Mike Allred. Really? Well, how did he get so lucky to get uh, these dudes doing covers for him? I don't know. I think, I mean, he's dead, I think. I'm pretty sure. Because he, cause he was killed for adultery or what? <laughs> he was stoned to death. That, well, that, I mean, it's like that that he didn't get away with that honor killing. Well, it seems like it was the thing to do at the time. Yeah, he died in like 1974. Oh shit. So this dude's dead. Dead. He's not like fresh dead like uh oh. others. Other yeah, yeah, exactly. Others. Hmm. Man, okay. in, Anyways. A, in, in a couple more years he makes a movie called The Birds, the Bees, and the Italians. <laughs> They're it's, the uh, the more aggressive it's, mixture it's, it's, of the It's two. an anthology sex comedy. Is that like Italianized bees? <laughs> I hope not. 
you remember? Oh, Do you remember oh, that? No, I know. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I had never seen this movie before. Uh, the only thing I really knew about it was it had kind of a nice cover on a DVD, mm-hmm. and I'm like, because it's like, hey, that's Jaime Hernandez. Mm-hmm. But I was like, what is it? divorce Italian style? No one talks about this movie, despite mm-hmm. the fact. You know, I discovered so this movie won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay, like orig- original screenplay, essentially. Um, our boy, uh, kind of the Italian uh, Tashira Mufune, Marcello uh, Mastroianni. Mm-hmm. He was yeah, not. Nom- that's appropriate. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but I think I think I'm nope. right. I'm. Yep. Am I always right? Well, he was nominated for no. he was nominated for best actor, and uh, Jeremy he uh, got a best director nod. So this movie was a big deal in At the time. Yeah, you know, in, in 1962 uh, and during that awards period when this movie came out, 61. Uh, mm-hmm. But like, on, like, I don't know. No one really talks about this movie too much. But that's sometimes like it's a weird period to think back to because now people like lose their shit when non-American movies get attention in the mm-hmm. Academy Awards. But yeah, mm-hmm. that was a that was a thing back in the old days. Um Yeah. I was gonna say something, but ultimately nobody cares. Tough so continue. T- tough but fair. Tough but fair. Yep. Oh. So uh let's just jump right into it. So okay. Sicily. Wow, you're really are you setting the scene for me? What's going on? No, I'm doing a hand gesture across the camera, Sicily, and I look out as I'm on a train, RJ, that frames wow. the movie. Wow, wow, just, oh geez, just, just like that Criterion essay I sent you. A train, a train. Wow, what it what an it's about important plot point. No oh, trains. So and it's like a cold open. It turns out because he's narrating how he got onto this train beforehand there's no real like reason that this should matter to you <laughs> it's just like oh mm-hmm. this guy's getting on a train and he's checking out uh, young women as he gets on there he takes a seat he gets what does he order rj did you make an order of that uh i don't a remember s- a steak and two potatoes oh i think i did because i was like i better go back to summertime get that beef steak uh mm-hmm. screenshot that i know the world is demanding at this point mm-hmm. it's been a yeah. while Beef steak, two potatoes. When you when you order potatoes, do you specify the amount? Well, I'd say like how I would want my potatoes cooked. But you wouldn't be like two potatoes mashed, and you'd be like, <laughs> I want two potatoes mashed. I mean, like exactly. what, what what type of potato are we talking about? Uh, Yukon Gold. No, not a, a russet. <laughs> no, Yukon Gold. We're Canadian. Come on. No, well, I mean these are, these are Italian. Italians? Oh, well, they're going to just be eating, like, uh, fingerling potatoes, like something crazy. Mm-hmm. Something crazy. Yeah. So, we, from this point on, he looks longingly into the landscape, and you're like, huh, he's, he's talking about it like he hasn't been here for a while. Where has he been? Where indeed? So, I don't know. And then uh, we flash back to uh, the his town village that he's returning to, Agrumont. Which I a- Agraba like I, from I, Aladdin? I, no. Okay. Agrumen. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a real place or this is like a uh, satire, a uh, satirical site of like all the stereotypes of Italy that would have been hysterical to 1961 audiences. Sure. Where you find out like a huge chunk of them are illiterate, all Catholic, chauvinistic. The what the, else the, do the, they the, do? The, the Communist Party is just. Men dancing with other men, talking about how progressive they are. The women are kept behind closed walls, behind slightly revealing shutters. Just, just give a little bit of a tease. Ooh. What happens behind those shutters? We'll, we'll get there. Oh. We'll get there. Um, we we find out that this guy is uh, part of like a diminished, like noble family. His father um, is like a baron. And a horny baron, which I will soon be describing all the characters of this film as horny at various points throughout the film, if not entirely throughout the film. Wow. Okay. This is the kind of level that I think people have wanted from uh, your reviews for a long time. We just, yeah. okay, continue. continue. So, uh, yeah. And of course, uh, so Fei Fei, he, uh, he's got this big cigarette just like out of his mouth, like for half the movie's runtime, just jutting which out. Which is nice. Yeah. 
Uh, it's it's kind of like a like eight and a half would be in like two years. Just constant cigarettes. It was the sixties. I I did like though how big his cigarette holder was. I think that really added to it. It really mm. adds class. Jared and some like phallic symbol, I suppose. I mean, I wouldn't put it that way, but it's just like say you have a cigarette holder, you got a fedora, maybe you have like an Ed Hardy shirt or pants, matching pants for that matter. Uh, frosted tips, the, frosted tips, a visor, or no wait, fedora visor. Sorry, uh, and then the cigarette holder. Yeah, I think it looks good. Looks, uh, good. I'm on board. Um, yeah. well, um, he's heading back home, but we get we jump back in the time where we are introduced to Cephalu Palace. Uh, yeah, I've which which is like you know, uh, it's like like a complex, a little villa. In the middle of the, the little vi- of the village, town, and we're introduced to all the characters again. So there's Horny Baron, there's his sister who's getting married to the uh, funeral parlor we're owner. Equally who, horny. They're very horny for one another. They just sure. can't. They, but you know, good being good Catholics, they just, they can't take care of that itch. Well, you got to wait your turn, man. Yeah, got to wait your turn. Um. Feifei's got a, a wife who is very horny for him, but his problem is he's not horny for her. He, all his horn dogness is being saved for that before mentioned cousin, all 15 years of her. Mm, he is waiting. In terms of horniness, where do they rank on the Riker scale? Oh, man. Commander Riker? Shit. Yeah, mm. are they, are they like some of them might be on? I think Fefe might be on par with Riker. I, I, mm, yeah, no, he's yeah, he's. I think he's a way above. I don't know in if terms uh, of overt. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if uh, Riker would orchestrate someone's murder, uh, where he gets to kill them himself, so he could uh, hook up with his cousin. That's a minor. I don't think that that's in him. Uh, no, yeah, Riker, Riker was as horny as he was. He was pretty pro, like, choice and, like, consensual legal horniness. So I, he, he, he fits somewhere in there. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Good. Um, so anyway, we get kind of like a montage of the town and we go to the church and I guess I get, we get introduced to the various factions, which again, I, I guess is acting as sort of a poking fun uh, at uh, uh, no, Italian no. institutions. Then, like, even though everyone's in church, everything's about uh, presenting an image of yourself, everyone's just sweating because they're all just looking mm-hmm. at each other. They're all like, oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to fuck you later. Ooh, that's the that that's a, the current here of the the, the situation. Even uh, the old dad, he, he's like the biggest fucking horn dog of them all. <laughs> He had some Duncan moves in there. You know, it's this swatting ass of the help. And then uh, the guy's wife's telling him, hey, don't bend over like that then. He, he, don't be like that. Don't tease him. Don't, don't, he, don't, don't ever show your back to him because you know what's going to happen. Uh, well, what would happen if you did, if you were wearing the wrong thing, perhaps, and mm. you, you didn't have your full attention on him, perhaps? What would happen then? Well, you, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, she she protests. She's like, "This is unfair," and they say, "Hey, just don't go around the old horny perv if you don't want to yeah. be hassled upon." Or watch yourself. Yes, that too. Yeah, yeah, really good, really good. So, um, after a successful day of dealing with this, uh, they retire to bed, and of course, horny wife. She she wants what she wants, but uh, Fefe is like, "Oh man." I don't, I'm not into that. I need to go peep on my cousin who lives across the courtyard in the bathroom. He said, I know that you're ready and willing at the moment, but I think you're gross. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm not into this thing. I'm not. Said, I'm, I'm, I'm put off by your appearance you're, you're, and uh, well, your is, is, personality. You, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's her appearance. I think it's just... Uh, he just doesn't like her? He's just, yeah, she's too, too suffocating uh, for him, for his style. He's, he's grown accustomed. He likes the... This new thing that's come along, this fifteen-year-old. 
And now well, we're he, yeah. rooting for him. <laughs> allegedly. He is the show's protagonist. He is the protagonist. And uh, the goal of the show that you are rooting for the show. Is, is that he will achieve his engage goal. his goal with his underage cousin. Mm-hmm. Who is under the legal age of, age of consent, I believe. And of course, the real, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. But this was old in times. 1961. So, uh, but Papa, Papa Baron, he, he needs to peep too. So he comes knocking on the door while he's still wearing his hat inside. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, hey, I need to get in there and take a, I, I, we assume a shit. And then he's like, you know, uh, Fefe's like, okay, go on in. And uh, he gets in there. And he immediately just like hops up on the big window sill and like rolls up the top window curtain. And he's he gets to a peeping, but we we don't even know who he's peeping on. It could be anybody. Who is he peeping on? Could it could be the could be her too. So you you said that you assumed he was taking a shit. Why do you assume that? I don't know. That's what old men do. They they take their business in there. I don't know if he had his newspaper with him, and he's just gonna have a a sit down for like the next forty five minutes. Let his mm. let his legs fall asleep. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So, no. Okay, continue. So, um, so that's kind of like the the first act, I guess. Uh, the second act is introducing the whole thing with Fefe, where he wants his cousin so bad, and but at the same time, he also is really sick of his wife, and he can't get divorced from her. And you get to see fantasies of his. Where they're mm-hmm. doing they're doing things, and he's fantasizing about killing her. Is that good? Well, it's depicted on the cover of the DVD, drawn by Jaime Hernandez. That's good. So some is of these, de- the co- oh yes, yeah, it is. yeah, those were those little uh, drawings. Are Rather each. playful, very playful. Uh, and this film, I think, is also playful. It's a it's a dark comedy, according to some. Uh, I feel like this movie could just be, you know, like the My Wife crowd. My wife. <laughs> I see. And they're right. So one of the deaths is, um, so there's a there's like the one moment where you see, um, uh, what's her name again? Uh, Rosalia, the wife. Uh, we see her get pissed off with um, Fefe's mother, who keeps like mm-hmm. making soap. She's like, there's got to be a better way. She's always making soap and it stinks. <laughs> And making this lard soap crap. It's like, should we, we should not be making soap all the time. And it's like, well, we just go out and buy it. And it's like, that's expensive. She's like mad. And this like really kind of sets him off because it's like, you're really killing my mojo of just like sitting around smoking and hanging out in front of this fan. That's his job, by the way. Uh, that is literally all he does. He's a layabout rich guy who's mm-hmm. like, he's got less money than ever. Well, I mean, they're, they're I, like they're like poor rich people. He just wants to be left alone, Jarrett. Yeah, he just he honestly just wants to be left alone and have his cigarettes, like you said. That's right. But it's an important job. Someone needs to do it. Right. So uh, he fantasizes about like stabbing her in the back and throwing her into the the cauldron of boiling fat for the soap render. Um, and then we go to the beach, and while at the beach uh what happens there she's like buried up to her neck for her uh arthritis uh yeah yeah there's a mention like she's like where he's like well she, she was buried in the sand as normal for her arthritis and then yeah. you go for her arthritis yeah and then so he has, wait and, a minute. And, 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 like you, it, it just made me think of creep show <laughs> oh uh with leslie nielsen and ted danson Ted and dancing. That's a good uh, segment in Creep Show. Yeah, not too not bad. bad. Um, and so, but he then goes. To, he was wandering off for a little bit, and then he runs into his cousin, and, and there's some flowers and an embrace, and then he takes off. Mm-hmm. Something happens there, and I can't remember exactly what it is that breaks that breaks up that moment. Maybe it's the shouting of her father, this angry old farmer, uh, who's like, like who's that. married into the family. Uh, yes. Yeah. There, yeah, because he's not part of the family proper. Yeah, so I mean, like, it's one of those weird things where... But is, they all live together. Yeah, it's like, is he her cousin and uncle? I don't I know. I think so. I'm not sure how that all works. Well, he, like, if, if she, that was a... really uh, That child's from a previous relationship. 
the, the I'm, not, uh, I'm not familiar with the genealogy, but I, it does, and, I, it, and it doesn't matter really. There's mention in the opening where it's like it's like we had to live in the same mansion. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah, because he was like bailing because his dad he's yeah horny 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 baron dad. He's also uh, you know a lech and a gambler. All the good things in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what gets you through. No. Yep. yep. And so yeah. he comes back with some flowers. Uh, and then he yeah so he fantasizes about her being buried alive in a like in quicksand and then he also uh fantasizes her uh being shot off into space in a rocket ship was that your preferred fantasy yeah. of death or yeah just, just launch him into space yeah yeah why not yeah. why not nice yeah, and clean I mean, nice, that's how i would like nice to go. and clean well you can't do that with superman because you'll get him closer to the sun and you'll get more powerful don't do that hmm Learn from Lex Luthor's mistakes. Um, and then, uh, so we get to the next bit where they are in a procession uh, going to some function or other. And along this function, um, we see, like, we have this story about, like, oh, do you hear about this, like, you know, mob guy, I think. And there was, like, there's someone who got, like, killed. Like, a, a wife got killed justifiably because she was schlepping some other guy. And mm-hmm. he's like, "Huh, oh, that's a pretty good idea." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, if I can concoct this idea, where <laughs> my wife, uh, and is my I, wife. I, if, I, if I if I catch her uh, having sex with another man, that justifies me killing her." And then I don't because that's the the hints. That's the marriage or it's the divorce Italian style. So th- because instead so- of like changing laws to make people yeah. happier. It's better to have it so you have to like concoct manners to kill your wife. I mean, because Jesus. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's even. Uh, there's not too much on that route. It's more just kind of like he's just like I'd rather just kill her. <laughs> but but it's like but it's like you can't you can't get divorced. Yeah, well, and like the thing too is like his his thing like leaves him in like shame as it is it's like you might as well have just divorced her we can't or, i guess yeah it's, i mean it was the only way he could do it exactly italian yeah. style italian style uh yeah i think at one point she gets shot uh in a fantasy of his <laughs> from like a, a sniper uh yeah so you get these little drops mm-hmm. so uh oh and then at this point too uh is he starting to concoct this idea uh Mm -hmm. rage dad uh angela the the cousin uh her dad's like freaked out because he read her diary and she was talking about the night that or the day that she's had the other day in the flowers all the embracement so much and he was just like i'm gonna get her checked out make sure she's intact they call him the midwife he's got this big nasty mole on her face and she's like no not her and then then she gets that but the midwife is able to report that she is undefiled it's like, uh, who was it? Was it Dwayne Wade that was sending his daughter in to get checked like that or something like that? Something like that. Something like that? Yeah. Problematic. So um, from this point on, it's kind of, he's got to find a guy. He's got to find a guy that he's going to get to bang his wife. Well, <laughs> well yeah, in his, his mind, he's just like, listen, he's like, if someone else has sex with her and I catch them, it'll be fine if I kill them. Be, Everyone will be on my side. Nice and legal. Yeah, he'll say it'll be on my side. And he's like, and plus, he's like, people will probably want me to. Oh. Look at these letters I'm getting. So, yeah, uh, as it just turns out, um, this this dude with a goatee shows up, and he's a he's a painter at the church, mm-hmm. but he's also an old flame of his wife. Oh, his wife. And, of course, his wife saw him in this procession. Oh, it was, it was like a funeral for somebody, maybe. I don't know. Uh well the the whole town just hangs out in like the mid the, like the that, plaza. This is Italy. This is yeah. what, this is what you do. You hang out in the plaza. Everyone hang out, and then yeah. uh, he uh, if you walk by, uh, people will notice, and they give you one of these, Jared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hand gesture. The hand. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, he's like, I just take my. He's like, my broad used to have great hips, Al Pacino style. He said a great ass. He's like, I just got to show it off. So he's like, we'll walk her by and we'll get her into the uh, the opera. And that's where he starts uh, thinking about where to pair her off. And then he gets the painter guy in mind. He's like, hmm. Um, so 
So the one thing that came to my mind, like as this is like kind of being laid out, the whole s- sequence of the movie, like that play, like him, like doing all this, all this effort, and, like this is kind of like a proto Yorgos Lanthimos movie in some ways, but it doesn't have like, any of the like exacting cruelness of uh, a Lanthimos mm-hmm. movie. Like, but it's like yeah. in the ballpark, but it's very like 1960s. And it seems too, it's too nice almost and too cute. Whereas I would be curious to see like a Lanthimos, not remake, but this type of story where it's like, oh, yeah, like I can't do this any other a way. Spiritual you, 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 you could see Colin Farrell playing the main character yep. here. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe like Catherine Zeta Jones is, is his wife. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm Rooney sure. Mara is the cousin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure who the, the painter would be, but you could uh, slot Mark Ruffalo in. or someone like that. Yeah. There you go. Mm hmm. Yeah, or you could be, or, or I. Yeah, it could be your uh, your first acting yeah. job. So uh, he has two things that he needs to line up though, because he, now he's got this. Now he's got them on the meat because he's going to get the painter to help restore some frescoes or whatever in the ceiling, of of the collapsing, um, you know, villa. And uh, so he goes. He goes to town to go uh, pay a visit to his cousin. He's can't, he has to see her, and he She's also gotta. he picks up a tape recorder. That he's going to install into his uh, own place so he can, like, document it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so he can be like, aha, see? And then, of course, he goes and talks to a lawyer, a very mm-hmm. high-quality lawyer, to like, be like, hey, we're friends, right? I bought you a drink one time. He's the best. He'll get me off. I like that scene, too, because uh, that's another classic spaghetti scene. We're getting a lot of spaghetti scenes in the uh, the Criterion Collection. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I guess like when you're shooting movies, it's uh, cheap. You can make pasta all day long. It, take, it doesn't take super long. It's all they eat over in Italy, too, well, I think. I'm, but, I'm right? saying, but in, in all of cinema, there's probably a lot of uh, spaghetti. There's a lot of Italian influence in cin- cinema, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, aggressively so. Uh, I have a, nor- a note here in all caps, horny housekeeper. Which one? Uh, the one that got her ass grabbed by the Baron, but now mm. she's like really into the painter, too. And and, and, she, oh, yeah. and she's like there, but her being there might screw things up. And then, of course, uh, Fei Fei's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this, is this painter guy trying to corrupt her? And this is when you start really, like, I, I start to really notice um, the the mustache, like, n- kind of t- quirk with his face that he does. Quark? Qu- quark? <laughs> yeah, did you say quark? Quirk. Oh, okay. Yeah, continue. Quirks and quarks? Yeah. Yeah. That was the one. That's the ticket. Uh, he says this like weird, like, hmm, where he pulls his mustache aside. Nice, nice little subtle thing there. I like that. He plays a good effect in this. Um, anyway, so mm-hmm. you st- then you, this is when you start realizing, like, this guy is just, like, listening in his, like, <laughs> private room with the fan on, staring off his stinky feet, listening to his wife uh, get seduced and also work on rekindling an old flame. And you're like... Mm-hmm. Is is this a cuckold? Is he is he like he's going along with a cuckold? And he's like, yeah, yes, they're doing it, yes. And he, there's this kind of narration thing where he's like walking the steps and he's imagining what the uh, the attorney's going to say in his defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he keeps like explaining it and like then the lawyer backtracks as he makes the decisions. Pretty good, not not a bad little gag. Um, but I, I would say that this is definitely the point of the movie that dragged for me was just like them getting together it just seems to go on for like 15 minutes and yeah. you're like okay i get it they're going to no matter what um but then like it all climaxes with um all the horny italians going to see la dolce vita they uh and i mean what a strange film to include in there is there any connection to this film uh the main actor rj who does not appear what? who does not appear on screen so it's so meta and then it's a big showcase of, uh, hey, here's a big chesty blonde woman dancing around. And you get this whole room full of just Italian men who are just looking at the screen. Mm-hmm. Thirsty. Because is... it's hot. That's the one thing I don't know if we mentioned enough here. It's it's hot here in uh, Agromont. It's a bit of – it wasn't the most right. realistic interpretation of Italians, though, because I feel like they'd be ripping the uh, – the screen out to try to get closer to this lady. Yeah, they just don't understand. They think that they think the, the, the train's coming at them. There's a woman. Uh, there's a giantess there on the screen. Get her. 
They say, get her. They say, that woman uh, could pleasure all of us. I, I think exactly. And I think there's like a bit where like in the narration, they're like, they came from the countryside. <laughs> no, that yeah, because they're filling up the screen. They're like, even the farmers came. Yeah, the and it's just like, well, it's like well, cause the dusty dudes. Well, there, there's a joke that like, it's the, yeah, because the, the, uh, the priest was like telling them, do not go to this disgusting, this, this perversion. But so the whole thing is that like, while, um, Fefe is out at the theater. Uh, he's got to go back because he knows, because of the tape recording, that his wife and the painter are going to be banging. And he's like, good, this is my opportunity to go back and kill them. Mm-hmm. And then so while well, he's on his way to go there, this is like when I'm like, fuck, this is like like uh, Gomez Adams. He, I, I honestly, I thought this entire movie, I was like, this is this dude looks and, exactly like Gomez. But then you start thinking about like, kind of like the ghoulish kind of uh stuff with like killing his wife you know like it's like it's not he does not have the love the undying love that gomez has yeah. for Mart- morticia but like sort of like the gallows humor um the, the gallows or the macabre, humor. macabre macabre humor i guess it's like oh yeah these yeah. are like charles adams comic strips of like weird deaths and stuff like that in this weird collapsing house with weirdos and stuff i'm like huh i don't know if anyone's ever mentioned that uh if, if charles uh, adams was ever a fan of the uh, marriage divorce style well when did the Adams family come out 60s the Adams family he was a comic let strip let me see because this movie came out in 61 but no I, I thought the uh, I thought the exact same thing uh, 38 oh, it goes back that long holy shit well, I don't, print see below comic 1938. Oh, wow. By uh, the first novelization, uh, Shecky. What? Okay, no, so now it's saying the 80s. No. Or not the 80s, the 60s, but. Yeah, it was, the, it was, it was the New Yorker. But when did, what year did the premise begin? Well, because at the very top of the uh, they say about the Adams family thing on the side here, it says comics 1938. Yeah, fuck. I mean, there's like back in the. Th- I mean, began uh, when Washington thirty two. His cartoons ran regularly from thirty eight when he drew the first instance of the family. It was like, oh fuck, he started in thirty eight. So yeah, no, I mean, it's just kind of a uh, maybe. Maybe uh, Jeremy is a, an Adams Family fan. <laughs> I think that. Uh, I makes think makes more sense. I thought the same thing. I was like, this guy looks like Gomez Adams. Yeah, but some, uh, I don't yeah, know why he, I he would never. I was like that more of the TV show, but even that yeah. seems late. Yeah, we're con- but... very concurrent with like monsters and stuff. Anyway, now that's like yeah. this drove me because of that slick back hair and the mustache, and mm-hmm. that all oh, this. And I went, wait a minute. He said, "Hold on a second. That's not Raoul Julia." Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, RJ, have, did you happen to read that essay I sent your way? I I glimmed it, and then I went, "This is why I don't read Criterion essays." Well, well there's the thing where the guy's saying like, "Well, you could understand why he's like into his niece." <laughs> Or his cousin. I didn't see peach, that part. Her peach skin. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Whoa, 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 buddy. Is that still getting produced in the Criterion? Because I feel like uh, it's so on their it's on them. it's on their website. Two thousand five, baby. Uh, it's a pretty yeah, weird. Yeah, it's yeah, a. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it's a pretty. Uh, it's like it, it's a different movie being watched. In my, in my opinion. Well, I mean, I think even twenty years ago, I feel like people should have been like, "Eesh," like that's not good. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just the whole thing. It seems like he's like the hero. Like you're really rooting for him. Like I don't, know, I don't, I didn't really feel like I was rooting for him. It was kind of just like you're watching it happen. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I was supposed to be, but at the same time, like like you, I was like, I'm, I don't want this guy to be to successfully court an underage minor, but uh, it's gonna, ha- but it's gonna happen. It's like I'm watching though. No, yeah. we're talking about it. Yeah, no, that essay was gross, and then at the end, I just saw it. Uh, the last line, it's like, and it, of course, is a master. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, God. People, so he, so he got paid for that, but sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I made a note here, too. I'm like, man, this is like kind of like almost the same idea. That would be the template for uh, 90s thrillers. Uh, yeah. Well, but, see, but, I but, actually. It would be more serious. Like you'd have Michael Douglas with like Ashley Judd or something. Yeah, I think so, too. But, like, I got the vibe right. from that a lot, too. Like, I was like, this seems a lot like uh, 
90s rom-coms to me like um it's like this is kind of like there's something about mary where it's just like oh the girl i like is with someone else and everyone... plus the girl i like is my cousin <laughs> whoa mm. um i guess would this will all be a, a movie to point out too because there's always this thing about like comedies are usually really badly shot this movie's not this movie looks great yeah it does it does it looks very good um looks good. And, and so what happens is fefe gets back to the house to to kill him but it's like wait a minute my wife, she's sneaking away. And she's like eloping and running away with the painter guy on a train. I can't just kill him in cold blood. Or in <laughs> hot blood, allegedly. Shit. And then now he's like, oh no, I'm a cuckold. And then all the social club guys are all laughing about it. And boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. There's a uh, extreme amount of cuckold talk. <laughs> at, least, at least five whole mentions of it. There's at least five. There was a couple more I didn't include where uh, when he's just reading the letters that he's receiving and he's like, cuckold. Oh, uh, yes, good. Cuckold. <laughs> good. Cuckold. He says it about four times in that scene alone. Uh, but yeah, he, he talks about cock, cocking mm-hmm. quite a bit, man. Yeah. Quite well, a bit. It, it's very, it's a major plot point here. I'm I mean, yeah, remember, it is. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Clouseau. He tried, that one movie we watched, uh, Le, Co- Le, Co- Le, Co- Le Corbeau. So that movie got popped in my mind because you have this European small community with letters and people writing mm-hmm. fake letters and like weird symbols. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, that, that just popped in my head again. I went, what is, what is this? This This is not something that I can relate to culturally, but it's in movies a lot. Because you... You prefer not to be part of the community? I guess. So what winds up just happening here is uh, the whole village just is like, they're like kind of embarrassed of him because they're like, hey, what are you going to do about this? Like, you're going you're to let her, this woman disrespect you. And since you're like, uh, you know, the nobility of this town, you, you disrespect us by not doing the right thing. And you're like, well, what's going on here? Because everyone's mocking him. His wife's like, or his uh, wife, his sister, her uh, boyfriend doesn't want to get married anymore because I don't want to marry into that mm-hmm. family. She's like, look, you fucking, you cuckold. You like it. You like being a cuckold. Spits on him. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's embarrassing the, uh, for the whole that's, family. That's the painter's, yeah, by the end. The painter's wife. Yeah, because yeah, the uh, what happens is uh, the cousin. Oh, I see. The, the you, cousin. Yeah. So the cousin's yeah. father dies because he accidentally reads one of the letters she sends the wrong letter to him she, yeah she puts him in the wrong envelopes and sends him to the wrong things very comically and dies he dies because like in all comedy he dies and then at the funeral the uh, painter's wife because it turns out he also ran out on his wife with and, and three kids and three kids and uh she's like what are you gonna do about it and he's like uh oh, didn't really have a response he just spits right in his face covid style and uh everyone's looking at him like you gotta do it everyone's like like we'll get you and then, and then a guy like, comes because well, well, one of the things is like he still wants to like kill his wife but he can't be like too obvious about it being like huh where is my wife at <laughs> but, but someone finally goes okay we know we all know what you want to do here we all know you want to take care of it mm-hmm. here's a name here's the place they're staying so he's like <laughs> well off i go yep and then what happens Jared? um well he catches up to them but before he can kill his wife, the other spurn party, the painter's wife, she shows up first and kills her husband. And then she's like walking back down the hill and uh, Fefe's like, what about mine? <laughs> and so he has to go up and kill his wife. And you're like, Oh, well, nice tidy little package. Um, mm-hmm. uh, everyone's like proud of him for doing the right thing. There's a trial. Everyone's very enthusiastic. And they're like, yeah, he did it. Um, there's this weird little line about, uh, you can't like have, Children can't testify in Italian court of law. It's just not done. But you can show photos of them because mm-hmm. children will always be children, which I think is uh, a pretty good little observation. Um, mm-hmm. And then, hey, Fefe gets three years, minimum sentence. Uh, the, a pardon doesn't come up, so he had to do his whole time. He's like, that's fair. It's what it is. He's like, but, you know, I'm coming back now. This is when it goes back to the train. Hey, we're coming back. Uh, my cousin, she said she was going to be here, but her letters aren't coming with the same frequency anymore. But oh no, pith, pithy that it'll be fine. It'll be fine. He said I was only gone for but three hey, years. Guess guess what? Three years. She's of age now. Oh, holy shit! Do you think she waited? Uh, well, she said she was going to. She, she did, and they get married. Yes, oh, they do. Wow, 
happy story. Seems like people are okay with it too. Yeah, they get on a boat. They're going on their honeymoon. They're he's nuzzling her. He's paying as much attention to her as his wife Rosario was paying to him. Very dotting. But then the camera pans down this uh, woman's bikini body, and you see her feet playing footsies with the boat guy who's operating the boat. And you go, uh oh, spaghettios. Say, oh no, she kind of did the thing. She went out to the one thing and she did the thing, Jerry. Well, RJ, that's Amore. Wow. This Paisan thinks he can just drop any Amores here and there as he feels. You didn't even ease in with a spaghetti or anything. Not nothing. Not one. Forget about it. So. That all being said, um, I guess probably one could infer from my tone that I thought this movie was aight. Very good. It's pretty good. Yep. Uh, it definitely uh, surpassed my expectations. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, so it's like I'm not in love with this movie. Uh, it's uh-huh. not like, holy shit, what a masterpiece, <laughs> like the Criterion essay. But I'm like, you mm-hmm. know, as far as uh, 60s Italian comedies go, not bad. Not too bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, really, I mean, all my enthusiasm, I think, is, was in my recap. Sure. Really. So, I sure. don't know. Um, yeah, this was good. And I look forward to checking out um, Jeremy's next film. And I wonder, will it be as horny as this movie? I mean, we could hope, right? We can, we can hope. surely hope. We can pray. Hope and pray that the horniness will... Never go away. Mm-hmm. So RJ, as a repressed Catholic with mm-hmm. great love for the Italian people yes. and, and cuckolds, what did you think of divorce Italian style? Well, I'm not sure where the repressed comes into play, but uh, divorce Italian style. My first comment is just, what is this movie? You know, what a strange thing to exist. <laughs> uh-huh. Which, I mean, I, I think we've thoroughly kind of covered. Um, the implications of this movie, we have a man who wants to kill his wife. My wife jokes, you know. This is very, uh, I think it's only in the last few years that uh, the awareness oh. people are starting to like. Can, can you repeat what you were just saying? It just zero, it just onked out that. You just zonked out? No, it's it, like the recording. Oh, okay. I was going to say, uh, I think like the initial setup of uh, his like, uh, him not being interested in his wife, like the my wife and then the Rodney Dangerfield, like take my wife, take her. Like those kind of like older jokes. I think in the last couple of years, those have kind of lost style <laughs> maybe for uh, not, not quite, not even just like the younger people. Like I think older people are kind of like that too, but I think most people are now are just like, if you don't like her, then get a divorce what about uh al bundy i mean he was a whole different kettle of fish altogether, right but they, they didn't have toilets flushing in this movie well, actually there was a toilet flush in this movie there was so it was all there um which i mean like i'm not saying that stuff's not here anymore i think people are just more aware of uh, those jokes now so you have a uh, this movie with this guy who wants to kill his wife and you're like oh well that's all well and good good <laughs> good stuff he, uh, as you pointed out, he just hangs out with his do rag in the hot room, trying to drink his coffee or do his crossword puzzle. And that uh, that wife, man, she just won't leave him alone. She's she's like, "Here's a little snack for you. Have a little sip." He said, "Can I have a sip out of your cup?" Mm. And he's like, "Ah, oh, he's in this fucking lady. It's really warm out. Don't don't come near me." <laughs> yeah, he's hot. And he's got his fan on. She's like, "Piping hot coffee for you. Give me a sip out of your cup." And he's like, "This." woman so uh he lives in uh, the little study room there uh and i was like for all that stuff i was like all right fine uh and then he's being involved with uh the younger family member and i was like like that's a little icky but all right let's see where this goes uh and then we have the elaborate cuckold uh s- strategy and i was mm-hmm. like interesting said so i what i didn't quite see it going that route but I think I checked the time. There was like an hour left. And I was like, oh, I guess that's what this it's some, I guess that's what this movie is. It's some real Kobayashi Maru action. It's a little Kobayashi Maru. It's like sometimes things are designed to fail, Jared. That's right. And you have to learn from that. All right. Uh, and then we had that set up. So, I mean, after the initial uh, 
kind of like what the movie was kind of uh got past like uh, i think there's some definite good stuff here um as you said uh it looks great um it's just put together nicely like uh everything's very crisp very sharp it feels it feels like a real movie which <laughs> sounds silly but yeah. it, it it feels like a real movie so i was like oh it's nice that there's some actual production and some actual value in this thing like it looks good they tried um our boy Fefe, he he's just pretty good to watch on screen, even when he's doing weird, gross sexual things. You're just like, this guy's interesting to watch. I'll I'll stay on board with this. Uh, for the comedy stuff, like um, I know we always talk about the dated comedy. Like I didn't find any of the joking itself like dated. Like the situation stuff, the rom com situation of setting your wife up for an affair. That's right. a little bit. Wow. And then like the whole thing of like every time he comes into a room or a space, his sister yeah. appears with uh, the, the, her fiance and they're like trying to like, Oh, oh, oh we've been caught again. But like, we we're trying to, we we're just about to have sex and now you're interrupting me. Mm-hmm. And they just can never seal the deal. Uh, man. Is, there, is there like the thing too, about mentioning that she's like damaged goods right at the beginning? <laughs> like you're like, Oh, well, like, I'm like, what does that mean? But it's, she's, she's getting married. So I didn't quite get the, Unless Maybe, it meant that, or was she uh, not intact anymore? I think that's what it because since it came up later, I, I imagine that's what it was. The implication that she had been with another man, mm-hmm. potentially, potentially, potentially. Uh, so yeah, some some of that stuff. I I think some of that stuff is dated, but there's actually some stuff here. Where like um, I said, I th- I feel like this is like proto rom com, and I actually do think that where like some of the some of the elements of the movie itself are actually pretty nice. Like uh, there's a scene in the church where he's narrating and then he sees that people are looking at him. So his narration gets quieter and it's just like, nobody can hear your thoughts, dude. But that's the joke, Jarrett. And he's just like, Oh, I'm in church. I better, t- I better mm-hmm. think a little bit quieter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's playful. That's fine. Um, I, I also think it had some pretty snappy, like editing stuff. Uh, with some of the jokes. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it's one of the scenes where he, they're walking up and down like the plaza and like people are looking and like it's, it, it moves pretty fast. And I was like, this is, this is just like what movies right now do kind of thing. <laughs> it's just like today. <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought it had a lot of elements of like situational comedy that are still used pretty frequently. So I was just like, Hmm, it's like, I'm sure it wasn't the first, but it did it effectively, so I'm sure it influenced some other people to continue this trend. So if this if this movie makes the uh, um, the circuit again, it'll have in in quotes timeless R.J. Baylog. Timeless. I mean, it's a story as old as time. Don't like your wife, cock. All right, Tim Heidecker. Is that what he says? Uh, that's something he'd say on, on cinema. The story as old as time. Yeah, story as old as time. You uh, hate your wife, you fall in love with your cousin. It, uh, it's happened to every, all of us. Yeah. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We'd all like to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is the vibe I get from this movie, though. Like, uh, frequently. Um, but yeah, so like, there is a... Despite the reputation that others have attributed to me, uh, there are some good things that I, t- I took from this Italian film. And it wasn't all, oh pizza pie um but there are still some uh questionable italian more uh morality and values in this thing yeah it's weird i, I don't remember uh, any of that coming up in salo the pizza pie yeah i don't remember that part uh, there, there, i don't think there is a pizza pie uh there's a pizza pie you're just it's just not the kind you want to eat yeah, friend that's right yeah so um yeah, there's that. But yeah, no, there there is actually there's some good stuff in this movie. The, it's just the movie itself in current 2021 uh, culture is fairly ridiculous. Um, and I, I realize that is the point. But uh, there are a few things you're watching and you're just like you kind of said, you're like, am I rooting for this guy? Like this dude who is like his goal is to hook up with this underage family member. It's like, is that who the hero is? And it is. He is the hero of the movie. So you're like, you're like, is that good? Like, do I feel good about this? I don't know. It's hard to say. 
Hard to say. Uh, so I think this movie definitely has some merit. It has some good things into it. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's some weird stuff in here too. And you're kind of just like, oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, divorce, Italian style. Oh, see, I haven't even done the Italian accent too much. Oh, there you go. You're, you're fitting it all in. Get your shit in yeah. at the end. Oh, gabagool. I think the funniest Italian thing in this movie, Jared which i think needs to be mentioned is the uh, the hand gesturing the one in the uh the, like the opera house mm-hmm. where he's looking around and the, he meets eye contact with the other guy staring up at him and the guy gives the hand back and he gives the hand it's like this he's like it's very like i don't know how to describe that like limp kind of just like uh. mm-hmm. I, I thought it was really funny i was like i don't think that's intentionally supposed to be funny but i like it pizza pie pizza pie gabagool macaroni and gravy you know what i mean they're insatiable, and there's not much we can do about that. You know who is insatiable? Who? People who hate this film. Tell me about them. Calamity Hey. Calamity Gannon? Hey. Oh, okay. Well, half a star. One of the most unpleasant viewing experiences I've had in recent memory. Moral ugliness filtered through jaunty tone does not equate to satire. Uh, is this skewering political sapphire or satire? Not is that bad. what it's more? It's more biting, biting, not skewering. Right. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the skewering review or ratings that this person gave. They gave AI five stars. Now I've never seen AI Jarrett, hmm. but I find that a little questionable. I'm surprised they don't have a... actually, RJ. You haven't seen yeah. that. No, I have not seen AI. Uh, there's not some not bad movies in here, but they did give Jersey Boys five stars, and I saw that movie on an airplane. It is not a good film, Jarrett. Okay, it is not a good film. A lot of half star film, uh, like ratings in here. Um, the Rugrats movie, American Pie, Driving Miss Daisy. You know, those aren't half star films, Jarrett. Jojo Rabbit, I've never seen, but. Hate, hate, hate. I don't think it's a half star film, if you know what I mean. Someone also, one thing I should mention Kramer versus Kramer, half a star. Uh, on their review, someone commented, Oh, come on. You didn't laugh when Marcelo violently refuses to take sugar in his coffee? This one's great. <laughs> so I just I, I thought I should point that out to you. Mm, thank you. And then Calamity Hay said, Oh, dear. We defer pretty wildly on this one. I hate to sound dramatic. But I didn't laugh once. Oh, it was Skewering. Severe. That's pretty severe. That's. I don't know if uh, they they'll ever recover from that blow. No. Wow. Uh, Shirley Berger Jr. Do you think there's any relation to Jared? Yeah. I don't know. Let us know. We'll have to find out. One star. The only in-flight movie on the Lolita Express. Uh, I mean, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think Shirley Berger could be related to our friend Jared Berger. Uh, five stars to Killing of a Chinese Bookie. Five stars to Hopscotch. Five stars to Dillinger and Charlie Varick. Five stars to Step Brothers, Jared. Am I speaking your language here? Mm-hmm. Uh, they have some other five star shows that are not quite as good. So maybe take that back. But here's a bio from this person 67 year old Jewish man, divorce. Former sports journalist watches movies in between putting on sweatpants and going to <laughs> Gross, Grossmaner Market, writing a novel on global corruption spanning across Latin America and the state of Maryland. Oh my God! This, this, is, this is my guy. <laughs> love, love the Red Wine Metro Rail, <laughs> the Avalon DC, Rockville Pike, and Lido's Pizza. <laughs> This person had a lot to say. They only have one half star film, and it is Shampoo. Wow. So, but uh, one star films were Divorce, and then this person, interesting connection. They one starred The King of Staten Island, and the last person gave a half star to The King of Staten Island as well. But surely Berger Jr., if this is Jared Berger's dad, he sounds like an interesting guy. Or grandpa, perhaps. I don't know. Grandpa. uh, Yeah, that was a... Pretty good bio. I yeah, like it. I like that. That's that's. I want to see more of that on Letterboxd. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll always uh, I'll always pop at a uh, mention of sweatpants. 
<laughs> and then the uh, the things they like, which in- <laughs> include a metro and a deli, I believe. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, finally, two stars from Aurora. Okay. I like this about as much as I could like a dark comedy about a guy trying to murder his wife so he can go after his 16-year-old cousin. Uh, I mean, yes, but that's quite literally the, the movie, movie, right? Yeah. Um, their five stars are just Criterion things, but also summertime, Jared. Five stars. <sighs> they like beefsteak. What can you say? They like beefsteak. Actually, here's another weird connection. This person and the last person had the lady killers in high ranking, the 1955 lady killers. Yeah. yeah so that's, I, don't about, I don't know about that. Just weird that uh, the things I see. Oh, this person half starred Joker. They weren't a fan of the society film. Commentary, Jared. Skewering commentary. <sighs> Skewer. Consider yourself skewered. Consider yourself skewered, friend. Yeah, uh, they do not have a, a catchy bio. <sighs> good. Not good. Not good. Not good. <sighs> well, any final thoughts on divorce? Italian style? Uh, I'd like to get some de- cured deli meats Italian style, if you know what I mean. Gabagool! So anytime... can we? When, how can we incorporate Italian style into our current dialect? <laughs> It'll happen naturally. Just naturally? Yeah. Italian I, style. Let it happen. So how would you describe... Div- no, wait, that's probably a good send-off or, uh, to bring us back. Never mind. Um, okay. Uh, after the break, we're going to go play footsies with the boat guy. Boating Italian style. <laughs> <laughs> 